Welcome to Q&A with Dr. Funk. I am going to answer your questions in a way that hopefully is very easy to understand and allows you to make decisions on your own in your everyday life. This day's question is on hamstring strains or hamstring pulls. In the event that I get a hamstring strain, what should I do? And this is from Abdi Rusi. Uh, the recommendation that I have typically centers around three words. We're going to explore, we're going to move, and then we're going to compress. What I mean by explore is in the event that you have a muscle pull of any kind, we often want to ensure that we're still moving and aware of what we can do with our body. We do not want to go from 100, which is what we were used to, all the way to zero. We're going to call this rest. I'd rather come up with a way to modify the things that you're doing on a regular basis. So if you pull your hamstring, you may not be able to reach down for your feet. You may not be able to run. You may not be able to do certain things um, that you might normally do, but it's important that you slowly move into positions. You see what you can do and that you almost touch the border, so to speak. Not saying that you need to go recreate pain or that you should do anything that is painful, but you also should not necessarily go all the way down to the point where you're doing absolutely nothing. We know that a little bit of light movement is actually therapeutic. Having circulation, um, running and, and, and moving through our body at a little bit of a higher level than just us lying on our backs is something that's gonna be productive for the healing process. This leads me to that next part, move, right? We explored the, the boundary or the borders that we potentially have on movement. Now we're gonna move uh, with a hamstring strain. You may tolerate uh, things such as walking and biking very well. Those are encouraged knowing that the more that I get that increased circulation might put me in a situation where I'm actually going to heal quicker. And then the thing that you can do often early on is do some kind of isometric activity. So an isometric activity is when there is no joint movement and no muscular movement. So me doing this, yes, there's muscular contraction, but the joint position doesn't change and the muscle position doesn't change. You could potentially push your feet into the ground if you're lying on your back to do a very low level isometric bridge. You could have your heels up on a bench and you're lightly digging your heels into the bench, feeling your hamstrings, but because there's not a lifting or moving of your body, there's not a full contraction or a change in muscular uh, length or a stretch on the tissue. Your body is staying in the same position. Yes, you're generating tension through the muscle, but because there's not a change in muscular length or joint position, oftentimes it's very, very well tolerated. And that's something we're often doing from a rehabilitation standpoint as well. The last part, compress. With compression, we get some kind of touch, we'll call it tactile uh, pressure, right? On, on, on an area which often will help uh, with some kind of discomfort. It may allow us to move and get into positions we were otherwise not able to do. And with acute injury, oftentimes there is some kind of swelling, inflammation in an area. This will kind of limit uh, the, the swelling or inflammation uh, and not allow things to become a, a little bit more significant with regards to swelling in that particular area. This is especially uh, suggested over the first 24 to 48 hours, both as you're moving around and potentially uh, at night. We always tell people, you know, think of swelling and inflammation kind of like a, a water balloon. We're not necessarily preventing the water balloon from, from filling up a little bit, but hey, if it doesn't have to quite go to uh, it, it, its maximal amount, that could be potentially positive for us. We're just kind of controlling a little bit. So think about an ACE bandage, put a 25% stretch on it. So instead of pulling the ACE bandage as much as possible and wrapping it, you're gonna pull it as much as possible and then go back to about 25%, wrap the area, um, and you should be good to go. Uh, other than that, those are the big three that I would focus on outside of seeking out a healthcare professional such as your friendly neighborhood physical therapist at R2P. But I'm here to answer your questions. So if you enjoyed this, give it a like down below. Uh, feel free to share it.
and send us your questions.